welcome to Emma's Stamp and Retreat. Today we're going to be creating some stitched Christmas cards. So there's nothing difficult about them, but they're really fun to do and I think they add a real something to your cards. So we're going to be using some new stitch dies which I was gifted from Spellbinders. So we've got this stitched starry argyle background which is really lovely and actually I'll show you this die cut in a minute. I think it's actually really nice as a background die, even if you don't stitch on it. Now we've got the stitch poinsettia and holly. So that's really nice for your floral cards. We've got this stitch Christmas sweater die. It's quite a big die as well. And you can replace the things on the front. So there's different things that you can put on the front of the sweater. And then we've got this gorgeous stitch Christmas tree as well. So some really pretty dies and... I'm going to create five different cards today showing you different ways to use them. So we're going to start with this Stitch Starry Argyle die and you can see how pretty this is. I'm going to use a lot of navy, silver, white today but you can see that this is really pretty even before I've added any stitching on. I hope you can see that on camera. It's kind of got the embossed lines where your stitching will go that shows you where the stitching goes but it's also really pretty embossed and then you've got this kind of starry or snowflakey pattern on it as well so I think that's really nice even without the stitching so for this one I'm going to use some white thread and some silver this is the Ankalame thread and I'm going to use two strands so if you've never used embroidery thread before you can pull it apart into strands so I'm holding two strands and then I'm pulling the other strands down to separate them so I'm just going to use these two strands and then I've got all these left for another project or probably for later in this project really and then this I've already separated into two strands so this die embosses some lines onto the pattern so that you know where your thread's going to go and there are some that go over and some that go under so I'm going to do the ones that go under first because those are obviously the bottom ones and I'm going to do those in the white. So I'm going to start in this corner here and the good thing about stitching onto paper instead of your canvas is that I can just secure the end with some sticky tape. Um, don't have to worry about trapping it under my threads or anything like that. So then these, the dots are quite far apart on this, so I'm going to go all the way to here. And then I'm going to come up again here. I'm just following these lines that go under the other lines. So then I'm going to come up here. Which is, so you've got one set here, then I'm missing a set, then I'm going in the next set. And then I'm going this way. So I'm kind of doing like a large cross. And then I'm going to come up this one that's next to it. And go back again. And I'm going to repeat that large cross pattern all the way across my card. So I'm going in here. Then I'm going up the one next to it. And I'm coming back up here. And then I'm travelling over to this one, so I'm missing a set again. And I'm going to go into there, back up, into there again. And then you can see I've only got a little bit left there, so I'm going to take that onto the back, just to secure that. Now, I don't mind that my back looks a mess, nobody's going to see it. It's just going to go onto my card. So then I'm going to trap this excess at the back again. So you can see I'm doing really big stitches here. It's not going to take a huge amount of time to cover my entire background. And then once I'm done, all I'm going to do is go down to the next level. So I'm going back in the bottom of this cross. And then I'm going to do the next level of crosses. So it's exactly the same um, pattern, but I'm just going to the next level. So I'm doing the same thing again across. And back up there into this set of holes and across and back up there so 
So you can see there's really nothing difficult about it. And we can continue that pattern all the way across the rest of the background. So that's that finished and you could absolutely leave it like that. I think that looks really pretty, but we're going to add the silver on. I know at the beginning I said that I was going to use two strands of the silver. I'm actually going to add in a third one. It's really easy to do that. All I'm going to do is just line it up with the others and put it next to them. And the reason I've decided to go with three, not two, is that the metallic thread is a little bit finer than the white thread and I want it to show up nicely on here still. So we're going to do the same with this as we did with the white thread. The only difference being that the pattern starts in different place. So I'm going to start this one here and once again I'm just going to trap these behind with this. And so this is the same pattern but we've got half cross at the top where it kind of goes across the other pattern. So I'm going to do the little kind of half cross first. So we're going to go into there and then we're going to go into the next one. And then we're going to go down to this one. Then we're going to go across to here. We're going to go up to here. You can see we're just crisscrossing all the way and just following those lines that are embossed on the pattern there's nothing difficult. I would say that the uh, metallic threads are slightly more difficult to work with than the normal embroidery threads just because the, um, the threads are kind of a bit more slippery they don't like to stick together as well as the other ones so if you have never done stitching before you might want to replace that with maybe a pale blue or grey or something like that but they're not super difficult it's only if you're really new to sewing. So then that's that top row done. So then we're going to come down to this second row and then the pattern becomes exactly the same as what we did with the white because then we're at the place where we're going to do the big crisscrosses. So you can see this pattern is exactly the same, it's just a row down. So we're doing these big crosses and then we're moving along and we're crossing that over. And so now it's the exact same pattern as we did with the white, so it's really familiar. And then now that we're at the bottom, I'm just going to finish off in the same way that I did at the top. It's kind of these little half crosses. So essentially the same pattern, you're just doing half a cross instead of a full cross. It's exactly the same as we did at the top. Then we've got this really pretty background and actually I think if you put a Christmas sentiment on there that would just make a lovely Christmas card on its own but we're going to add some poinsettia to this. So I'm just going to glue this to the front of my card first. I'm going to take all the backing pieces off this tape that I've used to stick these down so that lends extra adhesive to it. So this fits on exactly onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card front. So I've got a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card blank made of the same navy card stock as I've used for the die. So I can add this onto there. And all of that not so pretty back is hidden. So then I'm going to use a couple of extra die sets for this, both of which are new ones from Spellbinders and I was gifted these as well. If you saw my recent video on how to add dimension to your die cuts which I can link below then you'll have seen me use this and this die set. So we've got this poinsettia from the bird poinsettia set and I could have used the stitch poinsettia, you could absolutely do that, but I decided I've got enough stitching on this card already, I'm going to use this poinsettia instead. 
and I've also got this greeting set which is a really nice set it's got a ton of greetings but I'm going to use that for all of my cards today we've got this die cut element and the hot foil element to each one so for my sentiments today I've die cut them all from navy at the back I've hot foiled with silver hot foil and then I've die cut from silver Miri card star so then I'm just going to stick this on here and then to make up the poinsettia I'm just going to curl the petals a little with my fingers and then I'm just going to add these little berries onto this berry piece and then I'm going to add a small um, frame pad to the middle of one of these poinsettias I've cut it twice and then I'm going to offset this one on the top and then I'm going to glue on this um, centre here and I think that this piece could either be a centre for this flower or it could be berries for the holly as well so then I've laid out these pieces so now I can add them on and I'm going to add the flower on just with a small foam pad in the middle and that will allow me to kind of poke the other pieces that I want to add in, like these pieces underneath. Then I'm going to add my sentiment on some fine strips as well. And then I'm going to glue these pieces on underneath. So then we've got this really pretty glitzy card. So for this next card, I'm going to use the die set with the jumper. And this one is so nice because it's got all the kind of little bits to decorate the sleeves and the neck and the bottom. And it's got a few different things that can go in here. So it's got the ho ho ho, it's got the snowflake, it's got the little tree. So it's really flexible. So for this one, we're going to create a shape card. So to do that, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to place it on here so that this bit is over the fold of the card. And I'm going to die cut through both layers of the card bank like that. So now we've got this and you can see it opens like a card. And this pattern has gone through. So you could leave it like that or you could put a panel in there to write your greeting on. So I'm going to make this quite a simple card because we want to show off that stitching that we're going to do. So I'm going to come up this middle hole and I'm going to pop a bit of tape on the back to tape my thread in place. I'm going to go up to this hole and then I'm going to go into each of these holes around the edge of the snowflake. And then I'm going to do this and I'm just following the lines that are embossed on the snowflake. It's really easy to do because all you have to do is follow the lines. So I'm just kind of creating that pattern that's already there for me. Then we're back to the middle. So I'm going to carry on. You can see... We've done this bit and this bit, so this bit and this bit will be the exact same. So we're just going to do four of the exact same what we've just done. So then I'm just going to add a bit of tape to seal the end of that thread behind there. And then we've got this really pretty snowflake to add to our card. So we can make up the card. So I'm going to glue this piece, which is obviously just cut in the same guy. These are from um, Glacier Cardstock from spellbinders so you can see that then stands up like that and then it's really quick just to decorate that with these pieces that I've die cut so I've just die cut all the extra pieces in navy
then I'm going to pop our snowflake upon foam pads. And then I thought this warm wishes would be a nice greeting for this one. I'm just going to use a little bit of the foam tape on this one. And then I'm just going to finish off with a silver gem just in the middle of the snowflake. So then there's that card finished. It's really cute and it stands up nicely on its own as well. So then for my next card, we're going to be making some of these poinsettia. So to do that, I've just cut for each one, one of these plain ones and one of these with the bit ready to do stitching. So then I'm going to do the stitching in silver on this one. On everything that I'm using the silver for, I'm using three strands of silver. So then I'm just going through and again I'm just using the lines that are embossed onto the petals and so it's really easy to see where you're going. And then once you've done one petal you can just move along to the next petal and do the exact same thing. So then I'm going to make the centre and I'm just going to glue these little berries onto the centrepiece. So then I'm going to use this one first. I'm going to pop a foam pad onto there. Then I'm going to offset this one. And then I'm going to add the centre on with a glue dot. So then we've got another poinsettia. And then I've got these leaves. And you might have seen as well that there's some big berries in this set as well. So that you can use the holly leaves with the berries as opposed to the poinsettia if you wanted to. So then I'm again I'm just following the lines that are embossed into the paper with the die. So I'm just literally following those lines to make the lines on the leaves. So these smaller pieces really don't take that much time to um, stitch and they add really nice accents to your cards. So then I'm ready to make up my card. So I've got a five inch square navy card black. I've got a four and a half inch square piece of silver mirror card stuff. Then I've got a four and a quarter inch piece of the navy card stuff to go on top of that. So I'm going to mirror those up. So then I'm going to add the poinsettia on with some fine pads. I'm just using these small ones in the centres so that then I can push the leaves underneath. So then I'm going to glue on the leaves. And then I'm going to add this on with some fine pads. Then we've got another really pretty card. That stitching really adds so much detail and life to it. So because there's so many different ways that you can decorate this jumper set, I thought I'd show you one more. I've decided to go again with a shaped card, so I've made that base the exact same as before. But this time I'm going to decorate the jumper itself rather than putting one of the embellishments on the middle. And so I'm just going to use this zigzag line here. The holes on these are much smaller than the other ones we've used. I don't think they were intended to be sewn along. You can see I'm not having any trouble getting my needle through them. They work absolutely fine. And so all I'm doing is just following this zigzag line. So I'm going into one hole and then I'm going up the next hole and going back into that hole. So I'm just going to create this zigzag line. I'm just going to pick out different details on the jumper to decorate like this. You could do, use one colour of thread, you could use loads of different colours of thread and make it all different. 
and I obviously don't have time to make all of the cards you could make with this um, set but you can create different jumpers in different colours you can put them on card fronts instead of making shape cards like I have you could do all sorts of different sewing on them you could use all the different embellishments to go on them you could use the embellishments separately on different cards there are just so many ways to use this set that I really think it's a really flexible one so then I'm going to do this line here and so I'm just literally going up one down the next one up the next one and then back to that one so then I've got my pretty jump with all that stitch detail on it and these stitching dies are so nice but don't feel like you have to use stitching on them this would be really lovely if you cut it in white and ink blended it to add detail you could just cut it plain and add a piece of ephemera or a die cut on there you could add diamantes to pick out some of the decorations so many possibilities with them that even if you don't like stitching they're still really lovely dies to have so I'm just going to glue this to my card front and then I'm going to glue on these added bits so I cut these bits out of the glacier cardstock and then I'm going to add our sentiment up here And then you can see we've got this really pretty card. So then for my final card, I'm going to use the Christmas tree. I should have said earlier that some of these dies, like the holly leaves, this one, the berries that go with the holly leaves, have the outline die and this die. So you could just cut the middle one straight into the card if you wanted to sew it straight onto the card. But I've cut it out like this. It also means that if you wanted to do this without the stitching, you could just cut this outline die. And then there's this piece in this set as well, which I'm going to use for this card. But you could do use that just with the outline die and get just a really pretty tree with no stitching on it. But for this one, we're going to do the stitching. To be honest, you could make a whole heap of really fast cards by using this one with this layer on it and they'd be really pretty too and once again just as I have with all of the others I'm just going to follow these lines that are embossed onto the card and I am doing nothing fancy at all just up and down and up and down following those lines I think these ones are really nice ones to just create when you're in front of the TV or listening to an audio book something like that they're just really nice ones just to kind of like get on they're quite mindful and they're quite easy to do while you're like listening to or watching something and what I would personally do if I was making a lot of these is to do all the die cutting and do all the sewing one evening and then make them up at another point so then I'm going to go from this bit here to this bit and these bits all just go into the centre so you can see where this lays over it's actually easier to see if you put it like that where all the pieces go because you can see I'm doing this kind of like petal shape here so I'm gonna go like this and it makes it easy to section off each of those pieces and see exactly what you're doing Then there's our tree stitched and then I've got these sticky dots which is what I've been using recently to glue on anything that is delicate and it's because you can just kind of 
put this on here rub this over the top now add the sticky dots to the back and then I can just glue it on with no mess and you could obviously if you've not got sticky dots you could just add some double sided adhesive sheets to your die cuts before you cut them but I often forget to do that when I'm die cutting so I found these to be a really good solution I don't think this um, particular brand exists anymore I've had these for ages but I think you can still get different ones so then I'm going to use blue embroidery thread just to do these silver bits that I've got so I've got this tree base and the star and I'm just going to embroider this in like a zigzag pattern and then I'm going to come back afterwards and do the zigzags the other way Then there's that bit finished and then I've just done the little star in the same way. So I've also just got this piece that I've die cut in the navy to pop along the edge of there. So I've cut this background from white cardstock and that is the first stitch background that we use but I'm not going to stitch it this time and I'm just going to trim it down because I want a little edge around my card. So I've trimmed it to four by five and a quarter and then I'm going to glue it onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch navy card blank and it's quite nice because the navy then shows through all the little holes and then I want to pop all of these pieces up on there I'm going to pop my sentiment up on five heads. And then I'll add some glue onto the good star. And so then there's that card done. So there are all five of today's cards. I really hope they've inspired you to get out your needles and threads because I think that the added embellishment of that sewing really adds to these cards. If you enjoyed this video, I'd massively appreciate you clicking like below. And you can also press subscribe if you'd like to see future videos. If you press the bell button and select all, then YouTube will also notify you when I've got a new video available. All of the products that I've used for today's cards are listed in the description below. And there's also a link there to my blog where you can find a picture supply list if that helps you find what you're looking for. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you again soon.